you are watching this particular video, subscribe to this particular channel and uh, press the like button. Welcome students. We are going to learn today the general instructions and safety measures while performing in the laboratory. Now when you are coming to the laboratory, there is a utter discipline that you need to follow and uh, you have to abide by that very strictly. When you enter the laboratory, you bring with you the journal, non-programmable calculator, the lab notebook, lab manual. Then you are also supposed to bring the writing material which has pen, pencil, ruler. You have to bring the napkin without free. A lab coat which will protect your uniform. About the lab coat, I will show you the lab coat and instruct you accordingly. And a magic box. Non programmable calculator is allowed to do the calculations in the laboratory. So please bring that also with you. Never enter the laboratory empty stomach. If without having anything, when you enter the laboratory, then you will be giddy with the smells of the chemicals. And you will feel uh, like uh, you will have a vomiting sensation. So to avoid that, you must have your breakfast in the morning and then come for the laboratory. In the chemistry laboratory, you have to stand and do the practical. There is no way you can sit and uh, do the practical and therefore you need to have stamina also to perform the practical. If at all, but if at all, in spite of or taking care, you are not well and all, you are feeling giddy. Then you have to inform the nearest person to you. It might be your friend next to you or a teacher. You know, the information should go to teacher immediately that you are not feeling well. Whatever measures to be taken, teacher will take a major accordingly. Since you are wearing a lab coat, that lab coat should be worn properly buttoned up. Don't wear a lab coat like a doctor. You are a doctor and not buttoned up your uh, plant buttons. Don't do that. Doctors also button up their lab coats. So you have to button up because you have to protect your uniform. It should be inside the lab coat. So this uh, care has to be taken with respect to your wearing the lab coat. When you are in the laboratory, do not bring any chemical close to your nose. There are so many bottles which are kept in the laboratory. There is a proper discipline that we follow in the laboratory when we arrange the bottles in the chronological order. We arrange the bottles, so you should never change that order. Do not tamper with that arrangement at all. Okay? Any chemical, never bring. Any chemical is there, anything is there, go ahead and smell it. No, don't do it. Okay? Because that chemical, if it is organic, is having a peculiar smell, then that, that might again give you giddiness. And therefore, you should not smell any chemical or any bottle. Uh, in close to your nose and smell it. Okay. Order should not be taken. If at all you have to smell, like taking an order of the substance cannot can be one of the tests. If at all you have to do that, then you hold the beaker like this and then wave your fingers in between your nose and the container and then you try to sense the smell order of the substance. That is the way. Just in inhaling any fumes any substance and its fumes should not be done in a hasty manner. When you are handling some organic substances which are inflammable, inflammable means which catch fire, that time you should never keep such substances or their containers close to burner. Okay, they might catch uh, fire. Also, while heating this, if at all heating is required, you should not heat them directly on the burner. Again, they will catch fire. You know, you have to heat it. The instruction will be given to you by teacher. The heating of such substances is done in the water bath. So you should do it in a water bath. The way it is instructed to you. When heating anything in the test tube, let's like, suppose this is a test tube. When you perform the test in the laboratory, you will uh, put the test tube on a test tube holder and you will hold it in the Take a test tube holder and 
then heat it on the burner. So when you are heating it, direct the mouth of your test tube away from yourself. But that doesn't mean you have to direct the mouth of the test tube to your friends who are working nearby. So they, it should not direct to them also. Then where should it direct? Because uh, when you are heating, by accident, the, the solution inside which is boiling hot, it may splash out of the test tube and fall on you or somebody else. So that should not happen. So mouth of the test tube should be directed to the shelf, sides of the shelf, okay, towards the shelf. Okay, this care has to be taken. It is a very important instruction. You should work in the laboratory in such a way that none of your friends are harmed uh, by this. No, no accidents are happening in the laboratory. There are burners here in between the sink. This is the sink. In between the shelves is the sink. Okay, and in between the sinks we have arrangement for the burners. Say this is the burner. Okay, so now they are kept like this in front of the shelf. But you will be keeping it like this in between or in, in front of you, in between the shelf and the burner. Don't keep it very close to the shelf. So that because they are wooden shelf. So that's, uh, the burners have to be, to be kept away from this wooden shelf. So they don't catch uh, fire. Anything waste matter is there, like filter papers are there. Okay, some matchsticks are there. Or uh, any broken glass is there. Never throw it in the sink. You always throw it in the corner of the laboratory where you have kept the dustbin. So you go and throw it out there. Okay. So never throw anything, any waste matter in the basin. Do not throw hot acids. You heat a particular acid in some test, do not throw that into the sink directly when it is hot. It will make some sound and that sound should not come in the laboratory at all. Okay. So hot contents. Allow, keep it in the, keep the test tube as it is on the test tube stand, allow it to cool. Then after cooling, pour a little water into that, dilute it and then throw the contents into the basin. Turn off the water taps. These water taps are there. Once you take the water, turn off the water taps immediately. So there is no wastage of water that is happening. At the same time, you need to wash your apparatus etc. For that, don't wash your apparatus directly into the sink. But there will be this type of a beaker, plastic beaker, which is given or a mug that will be given. So that in that you collect water. So except this plastic mug, rest all uh, our apparatus are glassware. So take the collect the water in this and then do the washing. So like suppose this is the beaker I want to wash. I'll collect the water and then wash this beaker and throw the washings into the sink. Because this being a glass, it will hit the basin, which is made up of ceramic, and there will be breakage. Either whether it is a test tube or a beaker or a burette or a pipette. So don't directly wash anything into the uh, into the basin or the sink. You collect the water in a beaker and then from the beaker you pour the water into the apparatus that is to be washed. Like it is a test tube to be washed. Pour it in a test tube like this. And then make use of a test tube brush for washing. So this is a test tube brush. So you will wash this test tube with the test tube brush. And then again pour water and then clear it. And keep it inverted in the test tube stand. This is a test tube stand. Maybe it is this time or it is this time plastic one or wooden one, okay, depending upon which your availability is there, we will give you the test tube stacks. If at all any chemical splashes in your eyes or on your skin or if any mishap or accident happens in the laboratory, immediately inform to the teacher. It should not that you go at home and my finger got burned, you go at home you tell your parents, a finger, a finger is burned today in the laboratory and teacher is unaware of it. That should not happen. Whatever requisite thing is to be done, teachers will take care of that. Uh, first aid is to be given, that we will definitely give it to you. And if it is a serious matter, we will take you to doctor. All these things to be remembered by each and every student. If at all, but anything splashes on your eyes or on your skin, 
you inform your friend, nearby friend, and then let that information go to the teacher. But till then, what you should do? You should not stand there only with that burning sensation. Immediately pour water and keep washing that affected area, skin, or say eye. Go on pouring a lot of water, okay? And then wash that area with a lot of water uh, till teacher comes to you and then uh, takes uh, the steps uh, with respect to what is the next to be done depending upon the severity of the accident. Do not smell as a toilet order of the chemicals or the gases for a very long time because they may be toxic, like chloroform. The chloroform bottle if it is there in the laboratory because we need chloroform for various steps so we keep it. So you should not uh, smell chloroform directly, it's toxic, say methyl alcohol. For h 2 as gas we need in the laboratory but don't go very close and go on smelling it. That should not happen. Even ammonia excessively you should not smell. Okay. So unnecessary of taking orders of the substances you should never do. Keep away yourself from these chemicals, directly from these chemicals. Uh, anyway, in the, you are in the near existence or near vicinity of these chemicals. So those smells of different chemicals will come to you. But you don't go yourself and purposely try to smell these chemicals. That's what I mean here. There are reagent bottles as I told you, don't change the order of these reagent bottles either on the side shelf or on the bench reagent. Uh, they are kept in a particular order, what is the order will come to know when you, start, when you come to the laboratory. So don't change the order of the bottles. Also, like you know, if this is bottle number 9 and this is bottle number 10. Don't interchange the stoppers. These lids are called as stoppers. Okay, this stopper to the other bottle and this stopper to the, and this bottle. All such things you should never do. Same stoppers you should be putting into the bottles. Okay. So therefore, all this uh, mixing up of the solutions, pouring it back into the container. So reagent once taken out from the reagent bottle should never be poured back into the bottle. Never handle any apparatus or any unknown uh, solution in the laboratory. Not only this or any laboratory. You enter the laboratory, first thing is that you should wear a lab coat. Okay, and keep your books ready. Till teacher instructs, don't touch your apparatus. Come what may. Let teacher instruct you what is to be done with what apparatus. Only after that you will touch that apparatus. And then whatever experiment you have to do, do it sincerely. Uh, you know, like uh, adjusting. Manipulations. This is not expected from you at all. Please, okay, so sincerely, if you are getting wrong reading also, you show that reading teacher and so teacher will guide you. Why are you gone wrong? What is uh, wrong? Have you adjusted the duration properly? You get repeating of the solution. Whatever mistake is there, but that sincerely you present it to the teacher and show her. So if, I, if you are on the wrong track, if you have done everything wrongly, that can be rectified. So quietly and sincerely you have to work in the laboratory. Don't move unnecessarily from table to table. Workplace will be assigned to you in the, at the table in the laboratory. So be at your table. Unnecessarily don't go to other tables. No speaking loudly in the laboratory. If you are asked with the questions by the teacher, only then you answer. Once you finish doing the practical, then do the calculations or writing work and then for that day's experiment, whatever you have written in the lab notebook, show it to the teacher. Report it to the teacher, show it, get it signed, checked and signed by the teacher. And then come back to your place and then wash all the apparatus with water and arrange them properly. Okay, like suppose this is the buret stand. This is normally buret stand is kept in away from you. Okay. There are two chemical glass, the buret stand is there, buret is fixed here. And then there will be a pipette that will be kept in this particular space. Okay. And then there are beakers, one plastic beaker, 100 ml beaker in that, and then one big beaker and 100 ml beaker in that. Okay. This kind of arrangement will be there. There will be one tile. So all these apparatus you have to wash with water and keep it away from you. Okay. But when you are performing the practical, then you have to pull these buret stands in front. How front? It should not fall off. Put your four fingers away from the rim of the 
table. Okay? And when you are working in the laboratory, don't lean over anything. No leaning on the table like this, like that. No. Okay, stand straight, your backbone has to be erect. And uh, your there should be a gap, about six inches gap between you and the table. So that you know you are working smartly in the laboratory. That way. And then once you finish washing all the apparatus, you keep it aside, keep, keep it away keep, uh, the period stands along with these apparatus are kept in between the, the sink and the shelf. Okay, so arrange them properly and the strip stand will also be there. All these things, solutions you could have given in front of that period stand. Like this, you arrange all the apparatus, keep the apparatus aside. And that is how we have to, after that only you can do the double. As I told you, you have to keep one napkin handy because uh, you need to wash your hands every now and then, your hands will get wet. You need to wipe something, otherwise you will end up wiping to your uniform, so that should not happen. Okay? So, napkin should be handy. A napkin or an old bed sheet cloth, which absorbs a lot of water, should be there uh, with you. These are the instructions uh, when you are performing in the laboratory. Thank you very much.